Hi, I'm Michael. I am a boudoir and women's portrait photographer. I work here in New Jersey, and my clients come from all over New Jersey, New York City, and the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania areas. Today I'm going to be answering some of the most common questions I get asked about boudoir and the boudoir process, getting a little idea of how the whole thing works, uh, getting to know me a little bit better, and taking a peek at our wonderful building that we use. Well, back in the late 90s, I owned an e-commerce website. And back then, when you wanted to sell something, you needed to get photos online. So uh, I had to start taking photos of these items I was selling and work on them. And then I learned that the pictures that looked the best had the products that sold the best. So it was a little bit of trial and error till I figured out how to do that. And then also, I owned a uh, tanning salon, so people would come in and see me with this little digital camera. And again, this was back in the 90s when no one had digital cameras, and I had this little two megapixel camera that was probably five, six, seven hundred dollars at the time, who knows? But that's all there was. And so people would come in and see me that, and then someone started to ask me to take a photo of themselves, and it sort of uh, started from there. And that was really the humble beginnings of how I got started. I think I'm more of a true boudoir photographer and my photo sort of to focus more on beauty than anything else. I think the one thing that I've learned throughout the years in doing this is that women want to look beautiful. So ultimately, um, that's really what the, the focus of our shots are. And as far as giving somebody a true boudoir experience, you know, boudoir is shot in bedrooms like we have here not in a dark studio so we bring them into our building uh, we have a bunch of uh, bedroom vignettes in here that we use and uh, we really stick along the lines of having it like a true boudoir session well that's a good question and boudoir photography is expensive you know when you're running a boudoir photography company you know like any other business you have expenses there are buildings uh, makeup artists and then ultimately what you're paying for is someone's time and expertise and what they do and good people are going to charge good money for their services and there's no really way around that it's like anything else in the uh, universe you're sort of going to get what you pay for so be real careful uh, when you're shopping most people are coming in to do a session like this once you know, so save up, do it the right way, and don't skimp out and try to search for somebody with the absolute lowest price in your area, because more often than not, you saw it's not gonna turn out exactly the way that you thought it would. Yes, boudoir photography is very hard, and there are very few people who do it well, and I'm pretty involved online in the boudoir community, and I'm always looking through photos on Instagram and Pinterest and so forth, and really, there's a handful of people that I have seen who really have nailed it, who know what's going on, and uh, can really shoot a true boudoir session. You know, a lot of what is advertised these days by photographers is not boudoir photography. Uh, so people have to be really, really careful. I see and talk to people who have been brought into these photo studios and these dark photo studios and they're lined up on couches and backdrops and stuff like that and lots of flashing lights going off on their face. And that is not boudoir photography. Uh, boudoir is a very simple uh, form of photography and there aren't lots of flashing lights, there aren't lots of gear and it's about focusing on beauty. It has to take place in the right setting and uh, it's really hard uh, to do that well and it takes lots and lots of practice and some people just have the knack to do it and but for the most part you know most of it isn't that great what you see out there so uh, be careful and because uh, there's very few of us out there that's a good question and I don't really operate with a time limit or an outfit limit or anything like that that you see everywhere. And I think it's a really silly way to charge people for photography. It's kind of akin to going in to get your hair done and someone asking you if you want the 10 minute haircut or the 20 minute haircut. You know, people come in and they are looking for a result. Uh, it's not an amount of time. Uh, but in general, when we first come in, usually the first hour or so is getting hair and makeup done and then maybe going through the outfits a bit and coming up a little bit of the plan, what we're gonna to do today. And you know, people are always bringing in some special outfits that they wanna use. So we 
come up with a little bit of a uh, outline for what we're going to do that day. And then after that, we may be here roughly for maybe two hours or so shooting pictures. And that seems like a really, really long time, but it goes by really fast in a, uh, um, in a snap. So all in all, we may be here from three hours from beginning to end. And then after that, depending on how busy I am, it could take another week or so before I even get into the, uh, to the photos and start getting some uh, out there in the client galleries for them to, uh, to take a peek at. Absolutely no. Um, over the course of the years uh, I've been doing this, I literally have worked with people of all ages, probably mid-20s through 60, uh, all sizes, all shapes, all races, all colors. Uh, really, I know people initially may think it's uh, an activity for a limited few people, but the reality is, is there are so many people coming in these days and really it's all about uh, um, having fun. Um, so come on down and uh, uh, we'll take good care of you. No problem. We have this magic thing called Photoshop these days. Any little bruises, any little tattoos, any little things that happen to be bulging or popping out, no worries, we make you look great. That's a great question. I'm working with more and more brides uh, every year. And the thing about brides is they tend to have a little bit of a hectic, hectic uh, schedule. And as you get closer to your wedding, there's more things going on. There's more for you to really uh, get involved in and to manage. So I think with brides, the best thing is to come in as early as possible, three months or so, even four months or so before your wedding. Uh, that way before it's really crunch time and you have time to relax, take a break from everything that's sort of going on in your day. And then that also gives you plenty of time to get your book or album uh, before your wedding. Uh, and it makes things a lot less stressful as you're getting towards your wedding day. And then you have it there on time and it makes a great wedding gift. Uh, no. Um, what you'll see these days are a couple of things. Number one is that people really don't know what boudoir photography actually is. They think the definition of boudoir photography is just taking a picture of someone in their underwear and there could be nothing further from the truth. Uh, when you're talking about boudoir, I think there's a couple of key things that need to be in place for it even to be considered boudoir. And number one is you need the right location and boudoir photography is shot in a bedroom setting or a bedroom environment. Uh, if it's not there, it's not boudoir. And secondly, you need a certain mood. Boudoir is about beauty, maybe a hint of voyeurism in there, and it's about making women look beautiful, you know, so that's another factor that really contributes to boudoir. And then thirdly um, are the methods. Uh, boudoir is a photography that's shot very simply, very organically. Uh, there aren't lots of flashy lights and equipment and backdrops and stuff like that. That is not boudoir photography um, at all. And, you know, people these days, they see a lot of photographers advertising boudoir sessions and, uh, you know, without really knowing what boudoir actually is. And I see them going to photo studios and you know even though they may be doing shots in underwear and that's what they think boudoir is it typically isn't uh, that's a whole nother thing of glamour photography or studio photography and so i think the more people are educated about what boudoir actually is they can make the smart choice and uh, get exactly what they're looking for well thanks for taking a few minutes to stop in today and get to know a little bit about me and see our wonderful building here and as always, I'm here to help you out. So if you have any questions, send me a note and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. And I'll see you next time.